The Abu Sayyaf works in these areas. The plan was to hitch a ride on the northeast trade winds from Palau to the Philippines. On the binos, I'm looking at this boat going, hmm, could that be a pirate ship? Are you excited? I'm excited. It's a totally new world. I'm Ben. That's Ashley. Together, we did the unimaginable. We sold everything and then set off on a mission to sail around the world. Civilization. See you later. Oh, tomorrow. Tomorrow. Yeah. Twenty countries later and over 25,000 nautical miles, we are only halfway around the world. I have no idea what's going to happen. Subscribe to follow the adventure as we finish this lap. So we're about 220 miles out from the coast of the Philippines. It's one of those places that's pretty scary if you first hear about it. You hear about Abu Sayyaf operating there as terrorist cells. You hear about kidnappings of Germans and beheadings. You hear about violence and bombings and all sorts of stuff. I'm excited about the Philippines because there's been a lot of up and down in terms of did we want to go, did we not want to go, is it safe to go, is it not safe to go. So we just came across our first Filipino big fishing boat. It uh, looks kind of like a war canoe. It has like huge outriggers on it. We're like over 200 miles offshore and this thing is out here and then there's little like I don't know, bank is around it. This is insane. They're out here in the middle of nowhere. Well, I guess we are too, but still, it's cool. I think it's bigger than our boat. From the binos, I'm looking at this boat going, hmm, could that be a pirate ship? But it does get you thinking because they do have piracy in these areas. The, the Abu Sayyaf works in these areas. Now, I don't think they work this far offshore with these funny looking fishing boats, but you know. Oh, there it is. It's getting closer. It looks like a proper fishing boat though, but it is still, it's still funny. I'm, for, your, mind wan your mind wanders in that direction. The plan was to hitch a ride on the northeast trade winds and make quick work of the 500 mile journey from Palau to the Philippines. And quick it was as we charged along at 8 to 10 knots. Only a handful of sailors venture into these waters each year possibly because of the violence and the piracy fears. There is indeed active piracy in Philippine waters, but these are not your opportunistic dinghy thief pirates. These pirates operate carefully planned operations with hostage taking being one of their main sources of income. What we determined is that in the past two months there have been multiple successful pirate attacks in the southern Sulu Sea. Elections were in full swing causing a few more bomb attacks on land Finally, over the past 10 years, sailors have been taken hostage, some losing their lives tragically in both southern Palawan and Davao. As with everything, we evaluate the facts carefully before we make a decision. And after talking to other cruisers and reading government travel advisories, we decided to take a route through the central Philippines, avoiding the southern Sulu Sea altogether. Are you excited? I'm excited. It's a totally new world. We haven't come across fishing boats that look like this yet. I mean, we expected them. We've seen them in pictures, but... And we've seen them when we visited the Philippines, but never offshore like this. It's really quite cool. They're huge. They're very, 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 very big outrigger style boats. It looks like a giant triangle when it's face on to you. We'll see what tonight brings. Hopefully these guys are lit up at night. Hopefully we can spot them on the radar. But uh, it's, uh, it's just afternoon, early afternoon now. We'll knock off another like 50 miles before dark. And then we'll be 150 miles closer to shore, which Yikes. will get interesting. <laughs> All right. Yeah, it'll be a busy night, I think. No napping tonight. night shift last night it was pretty pretty good and then at the very end of night uh, I almost hit a bank and they kind of sneak up on you they're they're low to the water you don't see them till they're pretty close uh, you can't even see them on radar until they're pretty close so it's just it's just different right I got a big wave from one of them which always makes me happy I love it when we get a good wave from a fisherman who's out here working hard and yeah it's just different life out here we finally have all the fishing rods out which makes me really stoked to see and Ben's trying out his new fish, fish attractant. 
Got a new teaser. I'm behind the counter at the fishing store and I found these. These are amazing. These are teasers, but I've never seen a teaser like these. These are like bowling ball teasers. I can't decide what color to pick. And uh, I said this for your birthday and he goes, no, I'm using this. She said it's for my birthday and I said, no, not happening. This is going in the water Wednesday when we leave for the Philippines. I'm thinking blue. I was thinking like, I was uh, basically a bowling pin with mirrors on it and it goes like crazy underwater, but it didn't really work today. One of the things we've been super nervous about this passage is fads, fish attraction devices. Those things are what we're afraid of on our route to the Philippines, fish attractant devices. And uh, we're gonna try our best not to hit them. And we are kind of freaked out, man. Like people have put the fear of God in us. It's funny because you get all these cruisers giving, like, coming up to you and sort of offering their experiences, but they're so mixed. Some people say they sailed to the Philippines and there was no fads. Another guy said he came up from the Philippines and there was, you know, fads everywhere and like they, they're so big they'd like tear your boat in half kind of fads. We're moving fast though, so if we hit one of those at this speed, I don't think it'd be very good. But there are fishing boats out here, so we do have to pay attention to those and none of them have AIS. So it's all just a bit of, at night you check the radar, you look for lights all the time. It's, it's Asia now, like it's just completely different. Way more people, way more fishing boats, way more shit in the water. So we're just pulling into this island, the first island in the Philippines, and first memory that's evoked from our last trip when we were here, like 10 years ago, is the smell of the fires. They cook with wood, and it's so cool smelling. You can smell the village, it's really cool. And there's like this crazy, there's this crazy like boat that has like, it's like an outrigger boat with a house on top of it. This place looks cool, man. They have the coolest boats here, all the bankers. They're like proper engines just stuck in the bottom of a huge canoe thing with outriggers on both sides. They're ingenious. It's one of those places we came like a long time ago on vacation and I saw a boat there and I was like, yeah, I'm coming back here on my own boat. That's a big pig in there. Whoa. What's your name? Tati. Tati? Tati? Yes. I'm, I'm Ben. Tati or? Ben. Ben. Ben? Ben, yeah. Okay. Thank you for inviting us to your home. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> this is my kids. This is your kids? She's no. one and a half? Yeah. Yes. Yeah. This is my mother. Oh, hi. And Simon. Simon? Simon. Same hello. hello. This is Anthony. Hi, Anthony. We've landed on this island in the Philippines. It's called Sulawan Island. It's one of the outer islands in the Philippines. It's pretty cool here. It's a cool spot, man. It's super chill. There's some locals around and yeah. Uh, we've already been adopted and we've, we're grateful for that. And it's just, this is why we travel. This here is why we travel. Look at this little cutie. Yeah, look at that. Look at we got a little Nahua hat. <laughs> She's not quite sure. What am I drinking? Uh, so you're drinking... <laughs> what's this called? In Warai. Pushau. Pushau? Pushau. Pushau. Yeah. yeah, in Warai. Warai Warai, we call that Pushau. Pushau. Yeah. So they, this is like a young coconut. It's like all these little things in here are coconuts. So what they do is they chop this and then they put a bucket underneath and it drips out and you get, what's it called? Tuba. 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 Yeah. Tuba. And it's like, um, yeah, it almost tastes fermented. Like it's... It's a little fizzy. Fizzy, yeah. It's... Young coconut juice. It's delicious. Yeah. It's very, very good. Yeah. yeah. Met this guy called Bull Boy. He's taking us up to the top of the island to see a lighthouse from World War II. 
but we haven't walked for like three, four days. So, whoo, it's good exercise. All Hop right. in, man. Hop in, I'll take you up. Yeah, he'll carry you up. You get in there. <laughs> <laughs> no, 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 no. <laughs> the basket will break. Thanks, baby. <laughs> Ben's back will be fun, but the basket will break. <laughs> We're here. This is the one you put the light out, but it's what broke in. Yeah, it's gone. Yeah. Fall oh, over. it falls over. <laughs> It's already broken, this is also World War II. World War II? Yeah. Wow. Good. But this is where uh, World War II, I think the Japanese, right? Yeah. The Japanese lived here in this lighthouse. And they built this big lighthouse that is gone. Good to stretch the legs? Yeah, it's good to stretch the legs after four days at sea. We're on a, we're on a fishing boat. How many people on board? 17 people. 17. And they all sleep in here. It's pretty crazy out here. Wow, that was one of the coolest experiences yet. And we've only been in this country for two days. 